BBC News, I'm John Shea. President Biden has appealed for the largest hospital in Gaza to be protected from Israel's ground offensive. Speaking to reporters at the White House, Mr Biden said he hoped for less intrusive action around al-Shifa. Dozens of patients are reported to have died in recent days as Israel intensifies its military action in the area. The UN's High Representative for Disarmament Affairs, Izumi Nakamitsu, said the continuing Israeli bombardment was very troubling. The Secretary General is, and I am, deeply concerned about clear violation of international humanitarian law that we're witnessing in the ongoing conflict. Let me repeat the clear, unequivocal position of the United Nations that no party to an armed conflict is above international humanitarian law. Even wars have wars. But an Israeli military spokesman, Daniel Hagari, presented what he said was evidence that Hamas used the basement of a children's hospital in Gaza, Al-Rantisi, to hold hostages and weapons. Mr Hagari said suicide vests, grenades, computers and cash were found. I went to the hospital with a video camera and personally documented more concrete evidence that Hamas uses hospitals and in, as an instrument of war. Underneath the hospital, in the basement, we found a Hamas command and control centre. The BBC has not been able to verify this. Hamas has denied that it uses hospitals for military purposes. The US Supreme Court has for the first time adopted a code of ethics to govern the conduct of its nine justices. It follows months of pressure after an investigation earlier this year found that the Conservative judge, Clarence Thomas, had accepted luxury trips from a Republican donor. The rules restrict the justices from participating in fundraising, place limits on receiving gifts and forbid their use of substantial judicial resources or staff to engage in non-court-related activities. Donald Trump's eldest son has told a civil fraud trial in New York that the former president is a genius. Donald Jr. was the first witness to speak for the defence of the family's property company, the Trump Organization. He rejected a ruling that the firm repeatedly inflated valuations to secure favourable loans. Nada Taufik reports from New York. Donald Trump Jr.'s demeanour today was very similar to his last time on the stand. He casually answered questions and often joked with the judge. But rather than addressing the documents and loans that are at the heart of this case, he spoke at length about how valuable and unique the Trump properties were and how his father was a visionary who understood their potential and improved them. In court, the defense displayed more than 100 glossy slides. They have argued that the properties, including Mar-a-Lago, are undervalued in Mr. Trump's financial statements. World news from the BBC. Spain's Socialist Party has registered in Congress the controversial amnesty law that it negotiated with Catalan nationalists in return for their support in forming a government. Once approved, the law would apply to more than 300 pro-independence activists and politicians who face legal action over their attempt to push for independence for Catalonia. The deal clears the way for a socialist-led coalition, including Catalan parties, to be approved by Parliament later this week. The governor of the Ukrainian region of Kherson says at least two people have been killed in heavy shelling and rocket fire by Russia. Alexander Prokudin said houses, a hospital and an administrative building were damaged in Kherson City. He said a two-month-old girl was injured when a car she was travelling in was hit by artillery in a suburb. The Brazilian president has signed into law a rule that reserves half of all public university places for students of African or indigenous descent. Those with a disability or from lower income families will also benefit. Leonardo Rocha reports. President Lula said the new rules would help address social inequality and racism in Brazil where more than half of the population identify as black or mixed race. The current law, implemented a decade ago, sets aside a much smaller proportion of places, 12.5%, for eligible students. Critics say the quota system doesn't work in a racially diverse country like Brazil and penalises many students who work hard but don't fit the criteria. A Ferrari has sold in New York for nearly $52 million. It's the second highest sum ever paid for a car at auction, but was below the original estimate for the 1962 250 GTO. Only about 30 were ever made. The car had been owned by an American collector for nearly four decades. And that's the latest BBC World News.